Michelle here. Today's topic is uh, spiritual influences and the mind, and this is part three. So, actually, what today I'm gonna do is I'm not going to give the what we're gonna cover. Oops, what we're gonna cover. I'm gonna cover the parts as I go along. You know, usually I, I say we have, we're going to cover this and this and this. But instead, I'm just going to read through it. And uh, as we are reading, you will see what we are covering today. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, it's okay. We're going to cover, we're going to first look at the cross gives proper level to the human mind. Now remember this is for the Christian, but of course the secular person can also learn from it and they can either accept it or reject it, but it's their choice. Now, what gives, hold on. What gives the, the proper level to the human mind? It is the cross of Calvary. By looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, all the desire for self-glorification is laid in the dust. There comes, as we see aright, a spirit of self-abasement that promotes lowliness and humbleness of mind. As we contemplate the cross, we are enabled to see the wonderful provision it has brought to every believer, God in Christ. If sin aright, will level human exaltation and pride. There will be no self-exaltation, but there will be true humility. Letter 20, 1897. Now we know that... Mm, should I go there? No, I'm not going to go there right now. Um, we know that men, as people we are proud, of course. I am too. Uh, I don't know if I'm still, but I know I used to be proud. And that, um, you know, things doesn't work. Basically, I need Jesus. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Because I know... Um, the reason why I don't act a certain way is because I know that I'm not supposed to. And you can think of it as, uh, in a way, when you put yourself up, people tend to put you down. When you don't put yourself up, people tend to put you up, you know? So you don't say, I'm cool. People say you are cool. So, and that's, uh, that's where the cross of Christ comes, because when we look at the cross of Calvary, it shows us that our defects is the reason why Jesus had to come and die for our sin. Basically, if you're going to put yourself up, Christ's humili humility will, um, I would say, evaporate your exaltation type. But let's move on. Let's move on to, to the... The other part, the second one, man made. Hmm, let's see. Yes, man made. Oh, man is made complete in Christ. So, if you think you are complete without Christ, I got news for you today. Uh, you're not. Yeah, you're not. You may think you are, but mm, you're gonna realize you're not. Yeah. Christ brings his disciples into a living union with himself and with the Father. Through the working of the Holy Spirit upon the human mind, man is made complete in Christ Jesus. 
Unity with Christ establishes a bond of unity with one another. This unity is the most convincing proof to the world of the majesty and virtue of Christ and of his power to take away sin. Manuscript 111, 1903. Yes. Basically, I think that one I'm not going to even... Okay, so when you are united with Christ, you basically get the benefit of both worlds. This world and the world to come. And when I say this world, I'm talking about the good things of this world. Yeah, don't get me twisted. It's the good thing of this world, you know. Um, he didn't say it's going to be easy, but there's always a way out. Yes, there are going to be problems, but your life will be fulfilled. You will not be complaining about anything. Um, which actually we were talking about that about two Sabbaths ago, talking about the Christian and the work. Even your work will be fulfilled, even if that's what you would really like. But you will find joy because you want to please God in whatever you do. So yes, you will be fulfilled in life. And of course, when you get to heaven, even life everlasting, even better than that. So, guys, if you think you're, fi- you're, you're complete with Christ, um, you're actually on level negative one. Basically, check yourself. God alone can raise men in moral worth, moral worth. And before I even read this point, I'm going to say, just look at the country now. Our country, the United States of America, see how the morality is degrading. An interesting thought. Do you realize that all those fire going in California... I'm going to guess it's because they try to ban the Bible and uh, drive God out of there. So, you see what we do is, we wanna we want God to go away. We don't want Him in our lives, but we want His protection. You see, God doesn't work that way. And as sad as it is, um, California is receiving what... In whatever you call it, she deserves the state of California. Why? She didn't want God. If you look at the history, every single nation or every single part of the world that reject God, every single bad thing goes with them. Egypt, same thing. Babylon, same thing. Middle Persia, same thing. Rome, same thing. Greece, same thing. Look at France. You know, France rejected the Bible. They decided to have a goddess called Reason, which is dumb, basically. What happened next? Bloodshed. France again now rejected. They bring the Bible. They actually brought um, atheism. That's what you get. So, the value of man as God estimates him is through his union with Christ. For God is the only one able to raise men in the scale of moral worth through the, through the righteousness of Christ. Worldly honor and worldly greatness are of just that value that the Creator of men places upon them. Their wisdom is foolishness, their strength, weakness. Letter 9, 1873. So, selfishness and its fruit. And we're going to end with this one, actually. Selfishness is the the essence of depravity and because human beings have yielded to its power, the opposite of allegiance to God is seen in the world today. Nations, families and individuals are filled with a desire to make self a center. Man longs to rule over his fellow men. That's a fact. Separating himself in his egotism from God and his fellow beings, he follows his unrestrained inclinations. He acts as if the good of others depended upon their subjection to his supremacy. The present truth, June 25th, 
1908. Um, yeah. I don't think there is much to say on this one. I mean, you, we all see it, so there's no need to even comment for that one. Anyways, guys. So, um, I'm gonna leave it right there, and um, I, I hope to see you again. Yes, that was Mario Michelle. I hope to see you again, and if I don't see you again, I hope to see you again when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mario out.